so I owe you guys an apology because in my last video, which was kind of a what's new in luxury fashion update, I mentioned that I do have some new luxury launches to share with you from Hermes, but not enough to do an entire dedicated what's new from Hermes update. But then all the new launches kind of snowballed. I realized that I haven't done a review on the latest spring summer collection, mainly because it was kind of redundant. It was really repetitive. There weren't too many new pieces to share, but this is a ritual that we always do. So I realized I never shared my thoughts on some of the new runway pieces, which I want you to be aware of in case any one of these pique your interest. Then I got all the pictures for the latest fall winter shoe campaign. And I also forgot to give you an Hermes news update. So we actually have quite a bit to discuss. I really hope you don't mind that we're doing to what's new in luxury fashion back to back. In the previous video, we talked about some really interesting new luxury launches from different brands, but in today's video, we're exclusively going to be focusing on RMS. So if you'd like to hear about some other brands too, I will make sure to have my last video linked in the info box. And today is going to be all about Hermes. So if you'd like to chat about the latest Hermes launches, including a new Birkin and Kelly bag, which is not going to be in store for quite a while, but, if you'd consider adding either one of these to your collection, I want you to know of them as soon as you can, because if you're interested, it's good to speak to your boutique about them before everyone else does. So without further ado, if you'd like to hear my thoughts on some new interesting Hermes launches, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. It's October, which you know means two things. One, it's Halloween month, and two, it is time for you to place your request for a special order bag. So if you have been wanting to get your hands on a special order bag, it is time to do it now. I think the special order experience started, I wanna say last week we're starting this week in Europe, and then it will slowly but surely open up globally. So if you would like to be considered for a special order bag and you have not been asked, make sure that you ask your boutique about it. I mean, you know, it's never guaranteed. It's possible that they have no more spots available, but just because you have not been asked doesn't mean that you don't qualify for getting a special order bag. Maybe they are just not aware that you would be interested in getting one. So if that's something that you would love to do, if you have a special bag that you would like to add to your collection, placing a special order might be the best way to do it. So if it's something that you would like to take advantage of, make sure that you speak to your boutique as soon as you can. The next video that you'll see from me on Sunday is going to be full of tips and tricks, things to keep in mind before asking for and before placing a special order. And we may or may not go to my store to place a special order for me, which Actually, if you wouldn't mind, could you let me know in the comment section what bag would you ask for if you were given the chance to place a special order because I'm kind of at a loss. I'm not really sure what to ask for. I mean, I do have some ideas, but I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be feasible. So if you wouldn't mind, could you let me know in the comment section what bag would you ask for if you were able to get a special order back this season, which if you're placing an order this year, let us know in the comment section what you're going to be asking for. But even if you're not, what is it that you would want to get your hands on? I would love to know. And if you have not been asked, but you would love to be considered for one, make sure that you speak to your local boutique. There is no harm in asking just because you haven't been invited to place a special order bag. It doesn't mean that you cannot do it this year. Perhaps your boutique is just not aware that it's something that you would consider. So if you've been shopping with the same store and you feel like you're ready to get a special order bag, make sure that you ask your advisor, ask them if they have any spots available or if they don't have one for this upcoming season, maybe they can consider you early next year for the spring special order experience. So do ask and if you have already been asked, that's really exciting. I cannot wait to hear what you are going to be asking for. And then another thing that I wanted to update you on is some of the latest colors that are being offered for full winter, one of which we have been talking about for a month. I actually shared with you some pictures when I was in Milan, which is blue jean. So the iconic blue color blue jean is coming back. It is being renamed to new blue jean. It's going to be offered in Epsom and Swift, both of which I have seen and you can see too in my Milan shopping vlog. And then 
Previously, when Blue Jean was around, it was also available in Togo. So I hope it is going to be offered in Togo too. And it is one of the most beautiful shades of blue. In my opinion, it's a great color to have in your collection because obviously it is a blue shade, but it is as neutral as blue can be. It is genuinely just like the color of your jeans. And as jeans go with almost anything and everything, so does this color. So this would be an amazing color to have in your collection. Even if you're not usually into colors, you are more of a neutral kind of person. This I think would be a really nice and really safe way to infuse some color into your collection. And then there are some other colors that are being introduced. There is a new shade of kind of like a beige nude, which I think is called Marfa. I think it's called Beige Marfa, which is a really light, it almost has kind of a greenish hue to it, although do keep in mind that I'm slightly colorblind, so I am not your best reference when it comes to colors, but there is a new really light shade of neutral, which is called Beige Marfa. There is a really bright, vibrant, rich yellow called Sun. And then there is also a new shade of green that is being introduced for this season. So you have plenty of colors to choose from. My personal favorite is Blue Jean. Why? Because as I mentioned, it is as neutral as you can possibly get with an actual color. When it comes to Hermes shoes, obviously everyone knows and loves Hermes for the Oren and the Izmir sandals, which there's nothing wrong with other than the fact that they are slightly overdone and I don't think that they are as elevated and as most people think they are, but that's just my personal opinion. But I think one a range of shoes that is incredibly underrated when it comes to RMS is their boots. So I wanted to discuss some of the new boots that are launching for fall winter, which these are all part of the fall winter campaign, but these should be in stores really, really soon. Even if you have not seen them just yet, they should be popping up on the website and also on shelves in the coming weeks, you know, when it comes to shoes. It's not like that they are hard to get, but Hermes doesn't produce them in mass amounts. So it's possible that when they launch, they sell out quite quickly, especially if they feature a Kelly closure, because you know that anything and everything with a Kelly closure is insanely popular. But Hermes is doing a range of shoes with an oversized Kelly buckle, which I think we have talked about before. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about them, but there are some new shoes that are featuring this oversized blown up Kelly twist closure from heels all the way to actual loafers. But one thing that we have not discussed before, something that is a lot more understated yet, just as quintessentially RMS is the Harper ankle boot, which has this really special sort of H quilting that is inspired by the H etching on the locks that you get with different Hermes bags. So if you have a Kelly or really a her bag, any bag that comes with an Hermes lock, you're going to be familiar with this really subtle H etching, which is what these boots are inspired by and pay tribute to. They come with a really subtle little heel, but I think these would be a great pair to have that I assume seem quite wearable. Now, obviously I have never worn heels, so I cannot really share with you my personal experience, but if you have tried these shoes, please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And while we're on the topic of boots, obviously you're going to be familiar with the jumping boots, which they've been doing in two different height. They obviously the original jumping boots kind of go up just below your knees and then they came out with a shorter version a couple of years ago well for the upcoming season they're introducing them in one that goes all the way up to your thighs so if you do want to get a pair of statement boots something that are incredibly fashion forward these might be something nice for you to look into there is no doubt about it. This is not for the faint of heart. These are a head turning statement piece and you probably want to be really tall to be able to pull them off because they go up incredibly, incredibly high. And then another pair of boots, which will make a statement, but not for the right reasons is the hemisphere ankle boots, which I just don't really get these. They are a pair of shearling lined suede, wedge boots, which I think it is the wedge that I cannot get on board with. I mean, to be honest, the overall shape, unless you live in an igloo, I don't really get it. Maybe if you are going on a special vacation and you're going to be sleeping under the stars in the snow, these are appropriate, but otherwise 
these are not something that I think is worth your hard-earned money. Now, something else that I really quite like, actually, which is surprising because I'm not the biggest fan of the sheep sandals, but they're doing the sheep in silk, and they're also doing the, I think they're called the Oz mules, which are basically the Kelly mules in a really nice silky finish. I don't know what it is about silk and tweed and canvas, but they can launch anything in any one of those finishes and I will be all over them. So if you're a big sheep fan, they are of course doing them in shearling as they do them most fall winter. And they're also doing them in a really nice silky finish, which is a really special and I think they're doing them in some gemstone inspired shades. And then the last thing that I wanted you to be aware of is Hermes's revolutionary sneaker launch. So the new shoes that are going to be replacing the bounce sneakers because obviously the bounce have been so popular that you know sooner or later Hermes will discontinue them. Well the new innovation from Hermes is the hero sneakers which I didn't think it could get any worse than the bounce sneakers but it just did. These are some of the ugliest sneakers that I have ever seen. And Hermes does say, I think they said that these shoes are supposed to be a dynamic contemporary look, which dynamic, if you mean orthopedic looking by dynamic, yes, that is certainly the case. And contemporary, I feel like this is the sort of look that would have been considered contemporary in like the 1980s, definitely not anymore. But if you're interested, they are being offered both for men and women, not only in mesh, but also in leather. But please do not get these. I have no idea what Pierre Hardy is thinking because Hermes went through a really strong phase when it came to their shoes. But some of these more recent launches, I have no idea what they are thinking, but they definitely need to you know, catch up to the 21st century. And speaking of Pierre Hardy, in case you're not familiar with who that is, Pierre Hardy is, I think is he's responsible for the creative direction of Hermes Beauty. So he creates the, he created the packaging for the Hermes Beauty line. He designs Hermes's fine jewelry and fashion jewelry, and also Hermes's shoes, who is an incredible designer. I have so much respect for him, but that doesn't mean I love everything he does, but something that I wasn't going to talk about because it is kind of an acquired taste, but I guess since we already, since I already brought up his name, we might as well. Well, Hermes has just launched a new collection of high jewelry, which when it comes to high jewelry, these are pieces that will never make it to stores. There might be a couple of these pieces floating around out there, which are usually reserved for the press. These are really just a chance for Hermes to showcase their incredible craftsmanship, their incredible talent and imagination. Some of these things will go on exhibition and they will of course be in magazines and then some of them they might send to larger flagships just to put on display. But you never know, some of you out there might be big Hermes high jewelry collectors, in which case they have just recently launched an incredible new collection, which I love the inspiration of. You know, most pieces of jewelry, when we think about diamonds and gemstones, we always think about light because it is really the light that goes through these stones that creates this incredible sparkle. Well, this collection was actually inspired by the opposite of light, something that is the opposite of light, yet is always around, which is shadows. So there are different chapters within this collection. The first one is called Leur Du Jour, I believe it's pronounced, which is a collection, well, a range of pieces that have kind of an art deco feel to them and they feature black jade to emphasize the everlasting presence of shadows, which is incredibly special. Again, these are not things that will be in stores. They might pop up every now and again, but if it's something that you're interested in, you can definitely speak to your boutique about it. I'm sure that they're going to be more than happy to do some research for you, but these are not pieces that you will see on displays. Now, the next chapter, which is just mind-blowingly beautiful and I was so impressed by is the Lumiere Brute collection, which what makes this collection really special is that number one, it features uncut gems, but also the inspiration of this collection is that they try to mimic not only the pattern, but also the color of the light that is scattered through these uncut gems. So if you look at the shadow part of these pieces of jewelry, you can see how they carefully try to mimic each individual color that would come through the gems, which is just 
so incredibly beautiful. And then the last pieces that I wanted you to know of is probably the most wearable in this collection. And I use that term very loosely here because these pieces are still like, I mean, these are not for the faint of heart, but if you're a fan of the Shandong collection, you'll be happy to hear that there is a new range of Shandong in Hermes's high jewelry offering, which features two different layers of Shandong that are masterfully joined as one, one in white diamonds, and then the other in black spinels, which is of course meant to be the shadow part. There is a bracelet and a necklace in this chapter. And now that we have all that out of the way, let's move on to the latest runway collection, which is for spring summer 2024. Now, if you know Hermes, you know that it doesn't mean that these pieces will be in stores for spring summer. Hermes is not known for being on time, so I wouldn't be surprised if these pieces didn't launch until later next year or if they just never launch, that is not unheard of, that some Hermes pieces don't go into production, or even if they do, they do them in very, very small numbers. But regardless, let's move on to the runway collection, which we never really talk about ready to wear, and it's not because I don't love Hermes's ready to wear, the quality, the craftsmanship is just outstanding. That's not something that is ever questioned, but if you've been buying Hermes for a while, it can be quite repetitive. I mean, Hermes is nothing if not safe when it comes to ready to wear. If you've been buying Hermes for a few years, you'll know exactly what to expect for spring and what to expect for fall. They will have the exact same silhouettes, the exact same shapes, the exact same fabrics with slightly different colors and patterns. But there is never going to be anything groundbreaking, which there is nothing wrong with, but I never really feel like that we should spend minutes discussing ready to wear. Of course, when the collection launches, I will share with you some of the highlights, but what you have to know about this upcoming spring summer collection is that it was inspired by the countryside and nature. So they played a lot with the transparency of fabrics. They played a lot with how short certain things were. There was a lot of skin on display, which there always is. Yet when it comes to the actual pieces that make it into production, they're always a little bit more conservative. So I always like to wait until the collection actually launches and then share with you some of my highlights, but it was a really nice collection. And when it comes to the bags, we saw the exact same color palette. The first bag that made an appearance was the plume bag, which is not a new design. It's been around since the 1960s. However, it seems that it is being introduced in an itty bitty mini size because the plume bag previously was only available in three different sizes in the core line. The smallest one was 21 and the biggest one was 40. There was a size in between, which I think was a 32, don't quote me on that, but I think there was 21, maybe 32, and then 40, and then there were some different iterations of the plume bag, some that were designed for men, some that were designed for traveling with shorter handles, but the core line featured three different bags. Now, nothing has changed about the bag, the overall structure and the overall design, other than the size on the runway, they showed this bag in Swift and Goatskin, so Chev, and it is a really, really simple, understated, really traditional old school bag. It is not my favorite. I think when it comes to understated bags, there are some designs that are a lot more refined than this one. I just think it looks like a briefcase, so it's not something that I am a fan of, but if you are, I think we will see a lot more of this in the coming year, not only in the mini size, but also in the traditional sizes. And then moving on to a bag that is brand new for the season, it is and I apologize for my pronunciation in advance. I think it is called the Pannier Det basket bag, which was shown in three different sizes. There was a huge oversized basket size. There was one that was slightly smaller, and then they also did this in a little pouch bag, not only in full leather, but they also showed it in this sort of woven raffia finish. It's not exactly wicker. It's a little bit finer than that. I don't think that this bag will really make it into production. I think they will produce very, very, very few of these, if any. But if you're interested, I think it has a similar feel to that Loewe raffia bag that 
everyone seems to have, I think this would fill a similar gap in your collection or it would do something similar for you. So if you're interested, definitely check with your local boutique if it's something that they can buy at the podium or if it's something that they are planning on buying for your local boutique because I think it is going to be strictly available in very small numbers if in any. And then a bag that was supposed to launch for spring summer 2023. I personally have not seen it in person. If you have, please do share your experience with us in the comment section. It is the Archon tote bag, which I'm not going to spend too much time talking about because I have talked about this. I couldn't tell you how many times before. There are several different What's New from Hermes updates where we discuss this bag and to be really honest, I really like the idea of this bag. If you like a really relaxed, laid back hobo bag with some really unique utilitarian details like the pocket on the outside or the little hook that I think in theory you can attach your keys to, which I would not do. I would never attach keys to the exterior of a leather bag because that is a recipe for scratches and a disaster, but you can attach a scarf, your gloves, even a little charm on that little Hermes hook on the outside and then it also features this really cool thick adjustable shoulder strap with the Atrivi equestrian buckle and of course this bag if you couldn't tell has an equestrian inspiration to it I think it was inspired by the flap of saddle of saddles not saddle bags but of actual saddles which is a really unique bag I have not seen it in person but on the runway it was also shown not only in the original size which we had already seen before but also in a smaller mini size, which is actually not that mini. It kind of reminds me of the mini Gypsy for some reason. I think it would have a similar look and feel to it. It would do something similar for you as the mini Gypsy, which if you have not seen the mini Gypsy, it is in stores now and it is just over, I think it's like 5,600 euros or something along those lines. If you love that shape, but you're looking for something that is just a little bit more understated, this might be something that you want to look into, but the Arcon bag I think is a really elegant and chic design as long as you like a really relaxed, laid back, soft, slouchy hobo bag. I feel like we've been seeing more and more Birkin bags being shown in box leather. Last season I remember them showing, was it last fall winter? So fall winter 2023, they did show a Birkin Cellier, I think it was a Birkin Cellier 35 in black box. Well for the spring summer season they showed a Birkin 40 in box but this was in return and I loved it. I am really hoping that I will not get into my Birkin 40 headspace again because I've been there, I've done it, I burned myself and I promised myself that I would never go back but seeing more and more larger bags, I'm really developing a taste for it but I think a Birkin 40 is way too big for me. I know for a fact, I have tried it, I have bought several Birkin 40s and I had to sell all of them because they simply did not work for me but as we're going bigger and bigger with our bags, I don't think think that it would be surprising if Birkin 40s became more of a popular thing again. Now obviously I understand that it is going to be an acquired taste. There are certain people who are more on the petite side and a Birkin 40 will always be overwhelming on them, including myself. I think there are very few people who can actually pull off a Birkin 40 because it's not only in an incredibly large bag but it is also insanely heavy and while I do have bags that are technically wider or longer than 40 centimeters. When it comes to Birkin 40, you also have to keep in mind that it's also going to be quite wide. And yes, the longer you have it, the more slouchy it will become. There will always be this width to this bag that is quite substantial and the weight is just, I mean, these bags are really like carrying a set of weights with you and especially in box leather obviously box bags are not only more expensive than bags made of regular leathers but they're also a little bit more heavy because they're more of a substantial heritage leather so that is something that you have to keep in mind but we are seeing more and more bags being offered in box not only cellier bags but also return bags and then the last bag that i wanted to put on your radar is the kelly Allen, which launched a couple of seasons ago on the runway I remember they showed them with ostrich feathers obviously they also now are doing them without the ostrich trim they're doing them in plain leather so I think they're doing it in madame they're doing it in 
what other letters they're doing it in goat skin and then i think met alligator well for spring summer it seems that they're also going to be doing it in box with this really cool removable chain detail which you can actually take off the strap and wear it as a bracelet which is a really cool toy in one and now when it comes to this Kelly Ellen shape it is nothing revolutionary it's inspired by and at this point discontinued Hermes actually a Kelly pochette which I think was called the Kelly pochette long which had a really similar shape to it this is slightly different of course because it comes without the top handle and instead it features a really thin little removable shoulder strap which allows you to turn this into a shoulder bag and then the new version which is launching for spring summer will also have a metal piece that you can either have on the bag or remove which adds this really cool rock and roll feel to it personally I don't like these non-dimensional really really thin bags but I think if you're looking for a more formal bag something that you can certainly dress down but it will always remain a little bit more on the formal traditional side this is something interesting for you to look into it's somewhere between a Kelly cut a Kelly pochette and kind of a Kelly wallet it's a nice piece but um, I think it's really exciting that they are playing around with it and they're adding that chain detail which will definitely make it stand out from the crowd and my friends now it's your turn to share your review and thoughts in the comment section with us what do you think about this collection did you have a favorite or a least favorite piece are you adding any one of these pieces to your collection please do not hold back and let us know in the comment section and before you click off please do let me know in the comment section what bag would you ask for if you were given the chance to place a special order i would really really appreciate your help and i mean i already appreciate you for being here and watching it really means the world to me and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and i will see you back here with a new video really really soon